Welcome to Nick's Home Renovation. In this video, I'll be featuring the UK's top 10 kitchen brands, which are Benchmarks, B&Q, DIY Kitchens, which is an online company only, Homebase, Howden's, Ikea, John Lewis, Magnet, Wix, and Wren. I'll be going to each of these companies with the same design, which I'll get up on screen for you now. This is a CAD design I've had done. I'll go through it in more detail. I'll be going to each of these 10 companies with this same design and getting all the information that will really help you decide which one you would like to use for your kitchen. For those of you that are new to this channel, my experience in this industry is that I started out as an electrician, but I actually moved into sort of renovating houses in 2008, and it's something I do fully now. Um, the electrical work is part of it, but I'm renovating houses full time now in the Kent, Surrey and London areas. I specialise in kitchens, bathrooms, loft extensions and general extensions, but obviously happy to take on anything big or small. The results in this video are based on my experience. I've ordered every one of these kitchens in the last couple of years and three tradesmen I deal with on a regular basis. Um, they have over 65 years experience combined. Um, they're carpenters or kitchen fitters and they were really useful in finding out and telling me actually what the kitchen's like and how it is to fit it. I mean, it's one thing being cheap or looking good, but is it actually going to last a long time? Is it going to be a pain to install and cost you more through labour costs? So this was really helpful. We are grading the kitchen on the following. One, the best customer service, including in the store, when they phoned me back, how um, quickly I got an appointment with them and just their general professionalism. Two, which was the best branch, uh, what did the branches look like? Did they look slick? Uh, lots of kitchens on display, the num number of varieties of kitchens on display, the look of the branch. Durability, obviously really important in the kitchen itself. Uh, we'll be looking at the, the carcass strength and how long it's going to last, the guarantees that they sell you to. And the best looking, obviously, nicest finish and um, best longevity in how it's been finished, which will last you the longest time. And obviously, lastly, is the best price and quality mix. I'll be recommending which one I think is the best. There are some that are really cheap on here, but the quality is not that great. And then there are some that are really good quality, but actually quite expensive and overpriced in my opinion. So I'll be also giving you the best quality mix. There are no worktops or appliances in this because it's sort of how long is a piece of string. I mean, you can get really cheap, reasonable, appliances like hot point or you can go up to bosch and um, companies like that where the appliances are going to be way more expensive so i thought i'd just give the carcass price um, and that would be the easiest thing to you can just see the price differences between them all so now i'm going to move on to the cad drawing and i'll talk you through that so this is the amazing cad drawing my friend did for me if anyone wants his services just email me he's brilliant at doing everything for a house so this is the kitchen I decided to show to the 10 different brands. I'll start from the far right corner with the tall unit in the corner. That's a standard integrated fridge freezer with a 70-30 split on that. So the fridge part of it is 70% and the freezer part is 30%. To the left of that is a single oven and integrated microwave, one above the other. And then there'd be a cupboard above and below that as well for extra storage. Then to the left of that, we'll go with the wall units first. So 600 wall units, and then the other side of the extractor, as you know, I'm not getting appliances quoted on this, um, is another 600 wall unit, and then a thousand unit in the corner. Down below the right hand wall unit is a 600 base unit with a drawer. Next to that on the left is a pan drawer for your pans and dishes and things, that's 600 as well, and that's just two big pan drawers. And then to the left of that is another 600 base unit with just a single drawer at the top. In the corner, you obviously have a corner base unit, which is 1,000. So 600 of that will be sitting sort of hidden away and there'll just be a 400 door, but there'll be lots of space in there. Then next to that, you've got the run of four base units. One is 400, just a standard base unit. The next one was an integrated washing machine, so that essentially is just a door for the kitchen companies to supply you with. A 600 sink in the middle, as you can see below the window, and a 600 dishwasher on the very, very end there as well. 
as you can see there's an island in the middle um, that is made up of four units a standard 600 by 600 next to that an 800 by 600 and then two reduced depth units in the nearest ones to us now so on the left a 600 by 300 depth and then next to an 800 by 300 depth what that reduced depth does is allows you to bring the worktop out maybe so it's 1.4 meters wide so bring the worktop out maybe 1.2 out and then that gives you sort of 30 centimeters of leg room to put when you're sitting on the stalls and then the stalls can push under there when not in use to, things to consider on this is that obviously I've mentioned this before but just to reiterate none of these prices include any appliances that varies between company and company however I did find that Wren were, would price match any appliances prices you receive online so that's worth noting I think so no worktop either no upstand no, nothing like that is included as I just wanted to get a consistent price for a consistent product on all 10 brands but it is worth pointing out that that price does include your standard, you know, your end panels, tall wall and base and on the island as well, sort of corner posts, all those sorts of small um, pelmet and plimps. It's all those accessories that you might not think of straight away. I'll be going to each of the 10 brands in this video and looking for this exact style of kitchen, which is obviously a shaker style. Pretty simple design, so I know they'll do it. I'm just looking for consistency across all 10 brands to give you a fair representation. As I said before, I'll be looking at which company provides the best customer service, which company has the best branch, which carcass units and doors and drawers have the best durability, which is the nicest looking of the shaker kitchens, and which company provides the best price slash quality mix. So this is the B&Q showroom and the design that I have used in this example to price up for you the same standard as I'm going to be using throughout. The B&Q showroom wasn't overly impressive to be honest, very small and a lot of doors and things on the floor rather than out on display which I didn't like very much. This is the CAD drawing they did for me, it took around 10 minutes, I really can't complain, they were really helpful. They took my measurements, um, as you know, 12 base units, 3 wall units and 2 tall wall units with the fridge freezer and the microwave oven. And they turned it into this. The red parts are the things that I am not using, so the, the appliances I don't want any quotes for. And also the worktop, as you know, I won't be quoting for, so I just want to show you the costs of the cabinets. The pros and cons of B&Q were, the pros were that they're fairly cheap, uh, one of the lowest on the list. Come with a 25 year guarantee. The callback was very good within three hours. And as you know, B&Q are a huge company, so you've got lots of stores to go to. And that meant that it was a really fast booking as well with lots of employees to go and see. So I got seen the next day. And that they have 10% off of a trade card. Again, if you know an electrician or someone within the trade, you can apply for the trade card and get 10% off straight away. Unfortunately, there were quite a lot of cons. The showroom was very small, obviously B&Q and not just kitchens, so there were very few kitchens up there and the ones that were up there were just small and quite difficult to sort of visualise it in your own space. The variations of the kitchens were just on the floor, so just different types of door, different colours of door just on the floor in a little sample like you'd order from DIY kitchens. So again, hard to visualise it in your own space and really off-putting. Unfortunately, the quality, durability and finish, according to not only me, but my kitchen fitters and guys I've spoken with, is average on B&Q kitchens. It's just not as durable um, and strong as their competitors, and the quality is poor, which I think will let you down later on. It comes flat packed, so again, more work for the kitchen fitters. The CAD drawings were not as good compared to the others. For example, the Wix one was really impressive. And they didn't give me as much information in store as the others, sort of, you know, depth of units, any special features they have. 
which I guess is just down to either that particular employee or maybe just poor training in general, but it's not very helpful when you're trying to spend a lot of money in store. This is the Benchmarks showroom and this is the kitchen I'll be getting priced up, which is a Turin matte shaker kitchen in 18 millimeter. Um, the benchmark showroom is quite minimalist. It's for trades only, so there's not lots on display, um, but they do do some good offers and good deals if you know a tradesman with a card. This is the CAD drawings they did for me. I'll load a couple as I'm talking here to show you the different angles they gave me. Looks really smart, particularly like the handles they used, even though I'm obviously not pricing those up as I wanted to keep it consistent among all the videos. This took about 15, 20 minutes top, so really efficient. And then they emailed me all of the prices um, a little later on in the day. The whole setup was very good. I particularly like about benchmarks in the customer service side of things and the stock side of things, that it was really easy to get an appointment and I was impressed that they hold all of the stock themselves. So if you went in there today and you wanted to order a kitchen, you could have that kitchen that week. So that's really good compared to some companies on here where you're waiting anywhere from two to four weeks for delivery. So a massive plus point. This is the price they gave me for the kitchen. Um, it, the price in the top right hand corner is without VAT, so you have to add on 20%. So the total price is 4,252, unless you're a builder who sort of um, has VAT on their account, then the price in the top right hand corner is more relevant to you. This price is for just the kitchen units. Um, as I said, I'm gonna be doing that throughout the video consistently. So no appliances and no worktop as they sort of differ between what the client wants um, and what you or what you may want. And it's quite difficult to compare because a lot of people have different brands different types of worktop for example so for consistency purposes I've just kept it at just the kitchen units and 4,252 pounds is the total for benchmarks so this is my list of pros and cons for benchmarks pros great customer service that's in store I'll mention why I didn't think outside of store in a minute on the cons list and um, they were really helpful really quick to see me really quick to seat me down um, We've gave me lots of information and there are obviously lots of branches there sort of scattered around the UK. 25 year guarantee as do most of these companies on here so that's good. The best thing about Benchmarks in my opinion is that everything is in stock. Um, they have a big warehouse with the branch with lots and lots of stock ready so you could go in there and have the kitchen arrive less than 48 hours in a perfect world and if you forget something for example you can just pop down there and you know that you'll have that sort of sorted again really quickly whereas some of these other places and online websites you might take another two weeks to receive something if you make a mistake or something arrives damaged for example lastly good range of products um, they didn't show a lot in the branch as i mentioned it's quite a small branch but the products they did have on display um, were good and they had a lot in the book um, and on the shelves and things so yeah a good range on to the cons unfortunately they were the only company who didn't phone me back after my initial inquiry which I think is a huge negative as all I wanted to do was see a kitchen fitter and most people I imagine buy at least sort of five thousand pounds worth of goods from them in a transaction so for them not to phone someone back who's inquired into their products is a real negative. 18 mil carcass, again, I prefer 22 mil. It just means they're not as durable in my opinion. Um, and another big negative is that although they are ready-made kitchens in general, the tall units, so in my example, the 7030 fridge freezer and the integrated oven and integrated microwave units would be flat packed. So that would mean that whoever you're paying or unless you're doing the work yourself, um, to install this would mean extra time putting it all together and as you know time is money so that's a big con for me the durability from experience is sort of average it's not bad but it's definitely not as high as some others on here a um, bit flimsy with the 18 mil carcass and we've just had a few issues installing them before not being very very strong and then another big negative is that 
it's trade only, which means they also have a minimum of showroom as it's not for sort of day-to-day -day people to walk in. I mean, trade only is not the worst thing as I'm sure you're going to know someone who can go in there and apply for a, a trade card, but it's a little bit annoying. But and then the showroom only had maybe two or three kitchens on display. They do have lots of doors and things for you to look at, but I prefer to visualize and see the whole kitchen out on display. So this is the kitchen I've selected on DIY Kitchens. It's the same standard as I'm using throughout all of the brands. So it's a shaker style. And this one is called Stanbury and it's in Dove Grey. I'll follow this video with a quick guide how to use the DIY Kitchens website. And then after that, I'll show you what I found in my research and the prices and everything you need to know when you select yours. So I will want at one stage do a full video on this, but just for this video as I'm covering 10 different kitchen brands, I'll show you briefly how to use the DIY Kitchens website. So this is the website that I find is the best. The quality is very high and it's by far the cheapest um, compared to all the other brands that I will be explaining in this video. But to show you how to use it, you would have measured at home, hopefully your space. So for this example, we go to kitchens and we'll cover in shaker kitchens here. So then it will list all the shaker kitchens they have. Um, some of them, like this one for example, they just have in one colour or they'll have a bespoke service down below where you can have Farrow and Ball painted for example. But our example is this Stanbury painted one. Um, you can see here it displays lots of different options that you can click on and it will change the colour. So it gives you a really nice preview and then it gives you a little bit of information about it such as shaker style, 19mm thick. The actual example I'm using in this video is actually 22mm thick as I wanted to um, keep it all consistent across the 10 brands. But I'll just show you this for now. So you go to start buying and then this will automatically show you the ones I just clicked on which was sort of like a, a duck eggy greeny blue. So then all your unit categories over here, I'll just select one from each. So for example, if you just want a standard 600 base, you click on the unit categories and you've got your base units, corner, wall, etc. So it's really simple. So base units, I want to select a base unit first. Go and find your measurement. Let's do a nice easy 600 one, perhaps with a draw. So there's the standard one, 600 with a draw line. Go down and then that's just which way you want the door to hinge. So say if you want, as that picture shows on the right hand side, Keep it there, and then this is just the carcass color. So, for example, I prefer white. Um, then you'll just need end panels to, if it's on the end, obviously, to cover there, because that will be in the door color. You'd want the end panels, um, and the carcass color, you probably want white, as they don't usually do it in the same color as the doors, for example. I always do soft close hinges and soft close runners for the drawers, too. Adds a little bit of cost, but everyone wants that in their kitchen. And then simply add it to cart. The same applies for all the categories really, I mean there's, I won't go into too much detail for this video but there are many, all the options are so easy, click on wall units, there's all the different types of wall units, the thing to take into consideration with wall units is obviously they come in different standards, so 720, 575 or 900, I usually go for 900 as it's the tallest, gives you the most storage, but it's just something to note, but they do everything. 50 mil differences in most styles and then lastly just to note um, end and back panels and corners permit and plimps are really important and not one to forget as well as corner posts and you want those in the door material too so for example on end and back panels this is a wall panel for example here um, just so you're not seeing that white carcass color but again you just need to look out for this measurement, so that's for a 772 measurement, so that wouldn't fit the 900 I usually go for. So then you just have to go across until you find the one 952 that's going to fit the taller wall units for this example. Or you could even have one like this um, with a little bit of detail in it as well. So this is my shopping basket from DIY Kitchen. So like before, 12 base units three wall units and two tall 
appliance housing units for the fridge freezer and the oven with microwave so as you can see here I try and do it in a little bit of an order starting with the base units which are all these so it displays like this with a base unit and then what comes with it so which is the door it obviously says here standard dove grey that's the colour I've chosen for this example and then some of them will have a bit more of a breakdown if they've got a bit more involved with them like this one for example so this one's a single base unit with a draw line so you'll see the base unit here the draw front separated and the door separated so it's a really clear way of showing you what the breakdown of everything is if you want to do it cheaper maybe you think oh that's a bit expensive I'll get with the draw and as you can see as you scroll down there's the pan drawer in the middle and then we'll get on to stuff like plimps, corner post. So this one actually comes with a corner post, for example. So you've got your corner sink base, with door, and corner post. So some websites don't do that, but this comes with the corner post already there, which is good. Then we've got our back panels. So you have to remember, this is the one of the disadvantages with DIY kitchens. You have to think of everything. So you have to think of the back panels, the plimps, which are coming up. The pelmets, which is the bit under or over the wall units to hide your lights or whatever you may have under there. Plinth, as I just said, and then lastly, the three wall units coming to a total price of £3,605. This is the standard shipping. There are three options with DIY Kitchen. Standard just means basically they'll give you, you select a week from four weeks time that you want it to be shipped. And they don't specify a day until that week. They'll just text you a couple of days before and say, it's week commencing Monday. Let's We can deliver Thursday and you don't have a choice. Gold is a little bit better. So you get a bit more specific day and you get one person to help you. And then platinum, platinum is the best one where you get two people who carry the whole kitchen in for you. And you can choose a specific day and time slot. I always go for platinum just for peace of mind. And you don't want to be lifting the units yourself off of the van you want these guys to do it and they do it for a living so they'll do it much better and neater than you anyway so total price for this one three thousand six hundred and five pounds rounded up so this is the diy kitchen pros and cons list the pro definitely is that they have the biggest variety that i've seen anywhere this is because they're online only um but obviously it's really helpful to have different colors and different styles and a large variety. They come fully made, glued and doweled, so no installing on site with a 25 year guarantee as do most of these kitchens I've featured. These are really well made and very durable, come with different thicknesses. You can get the cheaper ones at sort of 18 mil, but you can also get the thicker ones, 22 mil. So really recommend these as they're brilliantly made and I've fitted at least a dozen of these in the last couple of years and they're very durable and my kitchen fitters say exactly the same it's actually their favorite brand to fit to they're very reasonable um, they're the cheapest on this survey i did and this during this research so very impressed again i think this is because they're online only so they skip the middleman so as they're the manufacturer rather than you know these other companies i have on this list um you're buying directly from the manufacturer therefore you're going to save a small amount and not having to pay any commission to you know B and Q, Howdens, etc. The cons of DIY kitchens is that they just have a showroom in Yorkshire only. Obviously they're internet based, so you can go up there and see it anytime you want and make a booking, but this is quite inconvenient for most of us. Um, you can, this is the same with ordering, so it's online ordering only. You don't have hundreds of branches like some of the other brands on here do. No CAD and design help for the same reasons as above, and you have to order samples and obviously return samples of all the doors. So whilst they're cheap, they sort of start from £5 up to about £35, and you do get that money back when you order from them. Um, but it's still a bit of a pain to have to organise this, and I, I usually order about five or six at a time, so then you have to return them, and it's a bit of a pain, to be honest. And the biggest con is probably it's down to you to get it right. I mean, I've ordered from them at least sort of 10 12 times so i'm used to it now but the first time i ordered i forgot about end panels and plimps and pelmets and all these extras such as corner posts so if you're in the sort of construction world or you're used to working with kitchens it's probably quite easy but for complete novices it's quite difficult to use and i'd sort advice from 
a kitchen fitter or a carpenter before ordering. So this is the kitchen I selected from Homebase, again to match the others I've used. It's a classic shaker in soft cream, had a really good deal on, 40% off, um, and it's 18mm thick. The showroom was fairly small, similar to B&Q, I mean it's not their main thing selling kitchen, so there weren't many on display. But the staff there were very, very friendly, really nice and very informative with lots of good guides and displays and information. So this is the home base invoice, sorry for the poor quality, it's the only way I could sort of fit it all on one page, but as you can see it came in really, really cheap, £2,078. This is kind of rough as um, they actually mucked up my appointment and I had to do most of it over the phone, so even if you allow 10%, which they said would be worst case scenario, £2,078 is fantastic. Um, as I said, the quality of these kitchens, and as I'll show you in the pros and cons list next, aren't the best but if you're looking for something short term maybe something you know sort of five ten year kitchen rather than a 20 to 30 year kitchen this could be the one for you as the price is very very good especially if you wait for offers like i received on this one so 40 percent off my kitchen fitter didn't like installing it but at the same time as i said if it's cheap um, then it might be the way to go so the pros and cons I found with home base are the pros, well, definitely cheap. One of the cheapest I've found and exceptional offer of 40% off. Really impressive. Um, lots of information in store, lots of pamphlets, information on the kitchens themselves, useful tips and tricks of the trade um, when looking into buying a kitchen or measuring a kitchen, for example. There are obviously lots of stores and they called me back within 45 minutes when I made my initial inquiry and then I got booked in the same week so that was really impressive but something you'd expect from someone of that size. They have a 65mm surface void at the back of their kitchens which is plenty of room for plumbers pipe work or any late maybe electrical work as well and they have a 6mm back support to give it a bit of extra durability but as we now move across to the cons you're going to realise that this is kind of a bit of a trick because they only mostly do 18 mil carcasses and um, they do do some for 22 mil but they're a lot more expensive in these shaker styles that I'm comparing everything with. It was 18 mil. Um, so the 6 mil back support helps but really it, it made, I found it very flimsy and so did my kitchen fitter when he installed this recently for me around about a year ago. Um, and he actually said it was really difficult to install because it was a bit flimsy and needed some extra support. Um, with screws etc when installing. This is probably backed up by the fact that they only give you a 10 year guarantee which I think is slightly worrying and not very good when you compare it to other brands I've featured. A very small showroom, obviously home base, uh, a huge company and they do lots of things not just kitchens and this was reflected in the fact that they only had about 10 to 12 kitchens on display so not very helpful when you are sort of looking for ideas or inspiration. Flat packed um, which is an absolute nightmare and you're going to be paying for the installer or yourself to put together for which is going to be a great additional cost. Unfortunately my kitchen fitter doesn't recommend them. Um, he chipped a unit when putting it in um, about a year ago for me. I mean it's one of those things you'll never, the customer will never see it because the bit that chipped was sort of out under the work surface and out of the way from the front but it still points to the fact that they're not as well made as others I've featured on here. And in my opinion, the general finish is not as high spec as others I've featured on here as well. I think just the general look of them just aren't as attractive. For example, I, I like the sort of shaker in frame style where you just see the square in the middle or the rectangle in the middle and you don't see as much of the lines between the outer edge and the inner square and all of them were just a tiny bit tacky. But I guess this is the cheapest range so maybe that is a more expensive feature, but you can't really quabble at the price, to be honest. But then I just felt in general that the finish was not as good. And as I've mentioned before, the um, the quality of them are definitely lower. This is the Howden showroom. Similar to Benchmarks, this is trade only. And they have a fairly limited showroom. They have more on display, like you can see in front of me now. 
more just doors you pull out um, and have to sort of try and visualize yourself. There are some kitchens on display like in the background there, but mostly it's just small kitchens on display and then drawers and worktops and things for you to pull out. The kitchen my quote is based upon is this Shelford shaker here, not much of it on display including a TV in the way, but just so I could show you what will be priced up. These are the CAD pictures they gave me, sorry for the poor quality, they didn't actually offer to email me them, so they just printed them for me. They were really impressive though, really nice colour and it didn't take long and looked really nice and consistent with all the other brands. Definitely one of the better CAD drawings I've had from all the companies, but it did take slightly longer, about 50 minutes to get this up but I think it just looked like the old software in my opinion but I was happy how they took my measurements and what I gave them and made it look exactly how I visualized and looks good from this point of view this is the price they gave me but that includes a few extras such as worktop which I don't want to include for consistency so the total once you take that off is three thousand nine hundred and eighty eight pounds which sort of sits mid-range with most of the brands I have on here. It was a fairly good and easy process. The only thing I would say is, I'll put this in the pros and cons, but it felt a tiny bit old school salesman -y. I mean, the initial quote when he got it up on the computer screen was like 18,000, and then he did a whole performance where he knocked sort of 60, 70% off a lot of items, as you can see in that discount code. For me, it's a bit of a performance. Why can't I just do that immediately and give you one price fits all but it just doesn't seem to be the way this branch in particular works or this business works. The pros and cons for Howdens are really good customer service in branch and also they phoned me back three minutes after my initial online inquiry which was the fastest by a long mile from all of the 10 brands so really impressive. Lots of branches, um, there's one a couple of miles from my house and I'm sure many other people have a similar thing. They offer 25 year guarantee, but so do most brands on this list. They have a lot of goods in stock, such as worktops. Kitchens take, you know, one to two weeks for delivery, which is also very impressive, but they do have worktops, handles, things like that in stock, ready to go in case you've forgotten something or need an extra bit of worktop, for example, really handy. Good range of products, not necessarily on display as I said earlier in the showroom, but they do have a large range of products with fast delivery possible, as I mentioned. And they also have both flat packs, which is like cheaper and ready-made available um, for whichever you prefer. On the cons list, a 19 mil carcass, not the thinnest. There's a few 18 millimeter carcasses on this list, but 19 mil is also a bit thin for my liking. I prefer 22 mil. From my experience, um, average durability and average installation success. Uh, we installed these in some rental properties for a client once, um, about six kitchens um, in around about 10 weeks we installed. And my kitchen installers said it's not the highest quality kitchens that they've ever installed, which usually means that it just takes slightly longer to install, which costs money unless you sort of have a fixed price from someone. I found the whole process a bit salesman-y like when I was in the showroom. Uh, they sort of put up a price that was around 18,000 for the finished kitchen and then they go through this whole palaver of knocking 70% off. And it just seems a bit of a strange way to do it because we both know it's not gonna be anywhere near 18,000 and I just don't understand why the price isn't just the price and why we have to go through this whole palaver of making it look like he's giving you a great deal when they do that with every run. Um, why can't it just be whatever the price is fixed for everyone? Lastly, again, like benchmarks, Howden's is trade only. Not a problem if you're a tradesman or you know someone, but if you're doing this yourself, then it's a bit annoying that you can't just go in there as anyone off of the street, high street and have a look. And again, like benchmarks, it's a very minimalist showroom, so there's probably only three or four kitchens, five max on display. Whereas other companies like Ren will literally have sort of, you know, 30 to 40 kitchens on display. And then what they do is they have lots of work tops and panels that you can just pull out. But I prefer to see the kitchen fully on display so you can see all the intricate details of every part.
So this is the IKEA Savadol door Metod cabinets. I probably pronounced that incorrectly. But this is a video of the showroom and the kitchen I decided to get priced up. The showroom was very impressive, as you'd expect from everyone knows about walking around IKEA. Um, there were lots of information, lots of brochures, leaflets. Um, you could literally buy everything you need for a kitchen from utensils all the way through to the kitchen. So very impressive showroom. So this is the IKEA portal. It's pretty cool actually. It's um, something that you can either go into store and they'll do this sort of CAD design for you and you can come on at home and look at it. Or you can actually just log in and create a username and password and actually create your kitchen and play around with it yourself. Um, so for example on the left here I've just clicked on appliances but you can just click on say dishwashers and it will bring up all the dishwashers they do and then you can just drag that into the main kitchen here. This is based on the design they've done for me. So for example, if I just click on one of these cabinets here, again, it shows you what's inside quickly with those little drawers. We'll give you tips and advice on the right hand side and tell you what's in it as well. And also most importantly, if you go up to the top here, it will tell you the price of everything. So this is based on, you know, the usual L shape with the island I've been doing for all of the brands. And this is the price they have given me for the kitchen, including appliances. So we have to take off this 1528 and we also have to take off down the bottom here. They've included the worktop as well. So I'll take that off for the video, but it's just interesting to show you how the IKEA website works and how they break down, similar to DIY kitchens, every part of the kitchen for example, this tall unit, they break down the door, how many door parts of it, how many filler parts of it, the hinges, everything. So the pros and cons of IKEA were, as you'd expect from a brand that's been around for that long and the amount of stores they have, great customer service, really good information in store, instant online booking, which is great, so you can just pick a date and time that suits you. Lots of branches, as I've mentioned, and as most people know from IKEA, really attractive showroom um, with lots of information. They Some of the features about the actual kitchens is they have the deepest wall units I've found so far at 37 centimetres, and also they go up to the tallest wall units, wall units I've seen at 100 centimetres as well. So that gives you a lot more space for your dishes and plates and things in the wall units having more depth and more height so lots more storage which is always great 25 year guarantee as most brands on here have so that's good but also a five year appliance guarantee which i think is really good because some places only do up to sort of maybe two years maximum so a five year appliance guarantee is very good and a good sign that their appliances that they supply are of good quality as i showed you earlier really useful online portal showing you the CAD drawings that you can either attempt yourself or go in store and then change or look at when you're home. And also shows you all the prices for everything as well so you know what you're sort of looking at as you go along. The price, 2795, pretty good. I mean, I'm gonna to go to the cons in a minute about why that price isn't quite right at 2795, but still pretty reasonable. As you know from IKEA, you can literally buy everything. I mean, you can go in there, you can buy the kitchen, you can buy your kitchen utensils, your plates, your worktop, your absolutely everything. And what's great is you can actually, if you're brave enough, build everything yourself. This has been designed for the flat packers who people who like to attempt these things. Um, it's going to take a long time, I'm not going to lie to you, because it is a little bit complicated, but it can be done yourself, even complicated things like the kitchen island it's all been configured in a very ikea clever way so that you can attempt it yourself the negatives 18 mil carcass as i've said previously 22 mil is preferred in kitchens and it's not as sturdy to install or just for the longevity of it ikea obviously is flat packed everything um it's so time consuming which is why i said about the price earlier You've got to take into consideration if you're paying someone to fit this kitchen, they are going to spend a long time putting it together. Everyone knows what it's like to attempt a wardrobe or whatever, but imagine this full kitchen is going to take some time. I installed a small kitchen of about 10 units once and 
even though the instructions were very good and very clear, it's just so time consuming and frustrating. So if you're paying someone else to do that, it's gonna cost a lot of money. Details about the kitchen itself is there's no surface void for your pipes and things, which is a bit of a negative. They do have a solution for it, but it's not as good as having a surface void in my opinion. The durability could be improved. It's not the lowest I've seen, but it, I'd, I'd say about a seven out of 10. But for the price and I mean the ease of putting it all together, it's pretty good to be honest, considering you're literally building this yourself. So the durability is better than other flat packers I've seen. This probably is the best kitchen for flat packers, but compared to kitchens that come ready made, it just doesn't get near. And like I mentioned earlier, it's a bit of a pain to install. They've tried to make it really clever, such as the units don't have four feet like regular the base units don't have four feet like most kitchens do. They just have two feet and you have to fit a back panel along a wall. And then all the units sit on the back panel and just need the front two feet, which in principle sounds like a good idea. But based on my experience of using it, if you're trying to put this in a non perfectly plastered or aligned wall, you're going to struggle. Um, and it's just, it's not ideal and it's tricky. Um, you're much better in my opinion, just going for the normal four feet, non flat pack kitchens. This is the John Lewis showroom and this is the Hereford 18 millimeter shaker kitchen that I got my quote based upon. It was the nearest match they had to all of the other brands kitchen. I wanted to get a consistent quote along all 10 brands. As you'd expect from John Lewis, I'll show you a few other kitchens because they really did have high quality looking kitchens on display. This is probably the worst one of all of them and even this is still pretty nice. I particularly like how on trend John Lewis were with the different sort of looks and you know some different units in the same kitchen, some colours that are quite out there and I thought they were really really impressive. This is the CAD drawing they made for me. It's not exactly the same as my specification, but it pretty much is a like for like in terms of price and they just added on the island as well. It came out 7,600, which is obviously the highest end of the scale from all of these 10 brands, but their kitchens are very attractive and very good to install from experience. Impressed with the customer service, as you'd expect with John Lewis, they were very, very good and they definitely have the best pre-sales and post-sales. I've had clients ask for ask me to install John Lewis kitchens, even though I'd recommend actually cheaper brands, but some people have their heart set on a John Lewis kitchen for obvious reasons. So I've installed quite a few of these and I've found that they are very, very good at dealing with you before you get going, coming to your house, measuring up, giving you time to make any changes, ordering the kitchen, and even once the kitchen's arrived, they check, are you happy with everything? Has everything arrived safely? And is there anything else you'd like to change at this point? So really good, as you'd expect, in customer services from John Lewis. My quote was actually based on this darker gray panel at the bottom here. I was looking at a kitchen with this sort of dark gray with a white sort of Minerva worktop to offset the gray and then the wall color was quite out there from what the client wanted maybe sort of a, a light pink so I think this dark, dark gray really works well with the white worktop and then the different color walls so this is what the 7600 quote was based upon the pros and cons of John Lewis starting with the pros as you would expect with John Lewis they had by far the best customer service out of all 10 brands they were excellent pre and post sale so before they came out, measured the space, um, we showed them what we wanted to do, then they gave us CAD drawings, and then they even gave us a bit of time for us to make any changes if we wanted. Then once we ordered the kitchen, it came really fast in about six weeks, and we even had a choice to change it once delivery, make sure everything was good and we were happy. So they were constantly communicating with us, that's what you'd expect for the high price, I guess. Really good information in store, I got booked in exactly the same day so I could select whatever time and date suited me. Lots of branches, obviously not loads, but everyone knows where John Lewis is. Very attractive showroom. As I mentioned previously, it was probably the most unique kitchens and sort of, I'd say, 2019, 2020 
kitchens with lots of different color cabinets, different worktops, different paints on the walls. Really nice, um, cool showroom. They have deeper wall units, 33 centimeters. Um, some of are the other kitchens have this as well, but most of them are 30 centimeters, so a bit more depth, a bit more storage. Really good delivery. Um, they take all the cardboard and things away, and make sure it's all good. They don't just sort of drop it off and dump it on you. And my kitchen installer says they're fairly good to install despite them being a bit thin, um, but they actually go in quite well. It might be because they take away a lot of the rubbish as well, so you can start installing them straight away. And obviously they're not flat pack, so again, quite fast to install. The cons are 18 mil carcass. As I've said previously, there are thicker carcasses, which are a little bit sturdier and better for longevity of your kitchen. Although the kitchen fitter did say they're fairly good to install, so they may support it in different ways to sort of offset the thinness of the carcass. They only have a 10 year guarantee, which is surprising for John Lewis, as they're usually pretty good with guarantees, especially as all the other brands on here have 25 years, or most of them have 25 years. They are expensive, they're the most expensive brand on this 10 list, um, which I guess you would expect but I can't quite see the justification of it in my opinion, even with the excellent customer service and the fact they are recommended by a kitchen installer. I personally would go elsewhere for that sort of money, even though the showroom was very impressive and probably one of the nicest range of modern kitchens that I've seen. And lastly, the durability is sort of on the average seven out of 10 scale. Whilst they're good to install, they're not, the best kitchen you're going to find on this out of the 10 brands I've looked at so far and a few of my kitchen fitters back that up in the fact that they wouldn't buy it for their own home even if they had the money so it's one of those things that for that price you'd expect them to be the best durability and unfortunately they're not but I guess they get focused heavily on the customer service. So this was the Winchester Shaker Kitchen in Magnet was really impressed by the showroom, looked very smart, the customer service was excellent, very nice people in there. There was lots of information around um, on the worktops and the staff were really good at showing me all the little details of the kitchen such as in this cupboard here for example, showing me the lining around the edge that just is a little bit different from other manufacturers just make it look really smart. And they showed me all different ranges as well from cheap to very expensive so I was really impressed. So this is the CAD drawing they made for me. Um, I chose sort of blue for a bit of a change, but I used the same spec and setup as I have throughout this video for consistency. As you can see, it looks really nice, and this took about 20 minutes maximum, and they gave me a price and details and everything, so that was really impressive too. When I spoke with my kitchen fitter and then two other guys who have fitted magnet kitchens in the last year for me, they were actually saying how impressed they were with the quality of it, which surprised me because I've been looking at all of these different companies and 18 mil kitchens just seem to be not very good high quality. But actually, I don't know if they manufacture it in a different way, but these kitchens had really good reviews from everyone who installed them. Um, they come in two options, flat packed or ready made. So obviously ready made is slightly more expensive, but worth it as I've stated previously. I've always just got to put it all together at an extra cost. Um, but yeah, that had really, really good positive reviews. And as well as the kitchen fitters praising the kitchen, I also thought in, in the store they were really informative and they, they really took my plan and sort of made sure everything was perfect and even recommended ways that I could improve it or change it to sort of better, to better suit the layout. So really generally impressed with Magnet throughout. This is the magnet quotation. Um, this is actually the full price. I actually received 10% further off from this 5251 with the trade card. So make sure you speak with your builder, carpenter or kitchen fitter and ensure you get this discount too. Some tradesmen might try and sort of pinch that 10% off of you. So make sure you deal with a nice honest person who doesn't do that. So this is my list of the pros and cons of the Magnet Kitchen. I actually installed several of these kitchens in the last two years, I'd say, but one as recently as about two months ago, and I'm actually gonna do a video for at some point. Um, so to start on the pros, they have really good customer service and a really good branch, really slick layout, really nice designs, 
not loads of kitchens, maybe like 15 at max, but every one of them you can just visualise having in your house because they just look really smart. When I made the inquiry on Monday, they got back to me within three hours and we made a booking for the same week, which is really good. They have a few different features to other brands on here, such as taller units um, on the oven and microwave part, fridge freezer part. So that gives you sort of more storage space, which is good. And also they have sort of um, indentation, shall I say, or design on the inside of the wall units, which looks really smart and hides sort of the, the natural carcass colour. I thought that was a really cool thing when I've looked at so many kitchens in the last year. I thought that really stood out. There was lots of good information in store, lots of information in and around the kitchens themselves, and then a really good pamphlet and booklet to look through, lots of useful tips, for example. Um, the CAD drawing as well was really good. Instead of looking at the, the staff member's computer, looking at the CAD drawing, and there was actually a TV above her head, and every time she was adding bits and pieces to the kitchen, that would show on the TV. But that was really good and sort of put the, the staff member a bit more at ease rather than staring at her computer. I thought that was really cool and different from what I've seen so far. Um, they have ready-made kitchens, as I obviously prefer, as you've seen through this video. And they also have flat pack, which is about 15 to 20% cheaper as well. So that's quite good that they have really cheap designs and they go up to the really expensive ones like all of these companies do as well. So really good variety. And as I've mentioned, um, my kitchen installer really recommended them. Um, they're only 18 mil thick which usually puts me off but my kitchen fitter said they, they seem really sturdy and really well made um so yeah he, he really rates them highly in the cons list as i just mentioned 18 mil carcass kind of contradicts what i'm saying but i just wanted to warn people out there and let people know because i prefer a 22 mil carcass just a bit more solid this may be why they only do a 20 year guarantee rather than 25 year guarantee but I, I tend to go by what people tell me, and as everyone has said how good they are, then I'm willing to stick with that. The only other con, really, are they more, they're more expensive than similar brands out there, apart from Ren Kitchens, who are more expensive than them. They're sort of more expensive than their rivals, so not many cons. So this is the Wix shaker I'll be basing my price on. It's called the Heritage Range. Um, really nice looking showroom. I'm very impressed with it. Very impressed with everyone there, to be honest. Came in at 4752. Um, I'll show you the invoice and the CAD drawings and everything now. So this was the CAD drawing they did for me. It was unbelievably quick, very impressive. Um, looked exactly like the kitchen in the showroom. So I couldn't really fault them enough for that. And then this is the invoice they sent me for £4,752. Um, the worktop's in there as well, but you want to exclude that as the worktops and appliances vary. I don't really want to include it in this. So these are the pros and cons from the Wix kitchen. The pros were there were a medium variety in the showroom, not as many as Wren, for example, but they had a fair amount in there, so I can't really moan at that. Come with a 25 year guarantee, as do most of the kitchens I feature here. Fairly well made. Again, I wouldn't say they're as durable as, say, Wren, for example, or DIY kitchens. Um, they have really good offers, though. Um, when I went there, they had one third off, which they do about four times a year. So every sort of three months or so. That's a huge saving. My saving alone was about 17, 1800, I think. And then I also got an extra 10% off with a trade card as I am an electrician. So obviously you'll be getting a kitchen fitter or someone to install it, I assume, or you at least have an electrician or a plumber on site. So I'd ask them if they have a Wix card because you'd get another 10% on top of the third off. So that's a huge saving. They have a 12.5 mil solid back, which is actually unique to Wix. So no other kitchen brand has a back that deep which um, gives it a little bit of durability but as I'm about to show you on the con list not as durable. Um, it's flat packed biggest negative by far because that's going to cause a lot more time for the carpenter or the kitchen fitter you have to put everything together whilst it is fairly easy to put together from experience it's still you're paying for someone's time that's always the most expensive part of these things so flat pack flat pack is not ideal. 
that obviously slows down the fitting speed and then the other negative I found when speaking to my carpenters and kitchen fitters is they say the doors and drawers are a tad flimsy um, with ones they've installed before just don't seem to be as good as other kitchens I've featured on here. So this is the Ren showroom and the kitchen in this video is the Infinity Plus. This is the same spec as I'm using across all the videos to keep it consistent. This particular style is Shaker again and it, I chose a dark grey for this purpose. The price came in at 5800 The Ren showroom is particularly impressive. They just specialise in kitchens so there were probably 50 on display and they're all in some branch. Lots of customer service people to help you out and it was really useful just to have that many kitchens on display so you can go and see them all rather than on the website. So the pros and cons of Wren kitchens are large variety in showroom as a pro, um, at least 50 kitchens in there, I was really impressed by that. They have a lot of larger features in their kitchens, for example the wall unit depth is 33 centimetres, standard for most kitchens is 30 centimetres. They have a larger service void at the back of 5cm which makes kitchen fitters like that for pipe work and electrical cables, things like that, so lots of space back there. They come fully made, glue and doweled. Um, the drawers are actually larger um, and deeper at 50cm. Again, other kitchens are usually around the 40 to 45cm, so more space for your things. Come with a 25 year guarantee. Very well made and very durable. This comes from several kitchen fitters I've worked with and I've actually installed myself. Um, the immediate booking on the website was really good. You can literally pick a time and a day and I got a day literally next day. So I phoned on, uh, went on the website on the Monday and had booked in by the Tuesday. They price match appliances from all your rivals, even some online retailers. So that's really good because they're on the high street so it might be a bit more trustworthy than ordering online. The biggest cons were that they didn't offer me a CAD drawing, which was very strange as that's what I went there for. Um, and they're definitely more expensive than other brands that, as you'll see on this video. However, they do have several benefits to other brands in the pro list, so you have to weigh up which you sort of go for.